And like I said earlier, it's not one board TV, but those five years you had at Wimbledon, well, they eclipsed anything that you did at Aldershot. So they, they were fantastic times for a club that has pushed on to, to special times, even now with, with, with moving into the new stadium. But firstly, Stuart, what, again, was it easy to, to you know, once the opportunity came to go to Wimbledon, team up with Terry again, it must have been a, a pretty yeah, well, easy decision. No, it was really easy. I mean, as far as working with Terry, it was, it was I'd been out of the game for a little bit. I can't remember how long I'd been out for. So I had that uh, desire to try and get back into it. Um, and Terry had the same. So <clears throat> we, you know, we, uh, a really good friend of ours, who Terry said, uh, Dave Anderson was was the manager of all the, at, at Wimbledon. And he did a great job. You know, he, he, He'd, um, he brought some good good players in and we went to uh, see, it was a player file, I'll tell you, wasn't it, when, when we went to Bromley. Um, so we was both at the game and, uh, you know, we wasn't there trying to steal his job or anything, but just went there to watch a game, watch a couple of players and keep our eye in on players. Uh, obviously, they was unfortunate enough to, to lose the game and then David, David stepped aside and... We, we spoke to each other, me and Tal, we said, listen, there's a, a job coming available. Should we um, should we get the CV in? And uh, he said, yeah. So we got our CV in. I had a conversation with, with Eric, who was the CEO at the time. And uh, as you can imagine, there was, there was plenty of applicants for the job. Um, so we was lucky enough to get an interview. We both went to the interview and at, uh, at an hotel in... Um, in Kingston, and you could tell as soon as we come out of the job, I said to him, "We've got that job. We'll get that." And then we was looking enough to get it, and um, it, it, it was an identical situation. To I mean, I was at Aldershot for eight years in in total, eight seasons in total. So, you know, from the level I joined to when I left, <clears throat> it was very very similar. Um, <coughs> and we took over. Uh, we got appointed. Um, you know, we discussed the budget, we met the board, we met the, the way the club works, the way the club wanted to go, had a good vision, had a good, a, you know, a good plan, a five-year plan, this is where we need to be. And, and we had we had five fantastic years there and uh, I really enjoyed it. And your first year, you, you won through the, the playoffs. And again, playoffs were, were, were handy, weren't they, to, to, to get in the playoffs by, by then. And you won at Staines Town, but it was a, a couple of late goals, wasn't it, that, that, that uh, got you part on, over the finishing line and up into the next division. Yeah, yeah and, was, and, oh, and, oh, and again, the, the, the journey uh, of, of both Aldershot and Wimbledon are so similar that if you speak to the real diehard shot supporters, the real diehard Aldershot supporters, sorry, the Wimbledon supporters, they remember Sandhurst away as Wimbledon's first game. You know, Sandhurst away, they remember that. They remember us beating Staines with two goals in the last eight minutes yeah. with the two substitutes that we just put on. And again, the small margins where Dave Anderson had lost two player finals George just missed out because in any given year there's there's a big team in there as well as you. The margins are so slight that you need to make sure you get the little things right. And one of the things that Stu and I did and we touched on with Wimbledon, we made sure when we went from part-time to full-time that we did an injury entry run. We made sure that we practiced penalties up to the Staines game. I remember having a massive fallout with Marcus Gull because we, again, prior to playoffs, uh, fans sometimes don't realise it, that you're all geared for those playoffs. If you're focusing properly on the playoffs, you're not really paying too much attention to the result of the game. You're saying, don't injure him, don't play him, rest him, rest him. Staines went into that game in second position because they've won about four on the bounce in about two weeks. And we'd we'd lost our games, but we were resting people. Yeah. And yeah, you still got to have the luck, but we knew we'd have to practice penalties. I had a ruck with Marcus Gale because 
he wouldn't practice the penalties after we just got beat at home by East Thurrock or something like that. We asked the crowd to stay behind the goal to make, to replicate the atmosphere and love them. We just got beat at home by the bottom of the league team two games before the playoffs and they all stood there waiting. Marcus, like, quite rightly, was you know annoyed and difficult. This is embarrassing, Brown. How embarrassing is this? You know, he's a man who scored at tricks against Man United, for heaven's sake. And he's having to take penalties out. He just got beat by um, whoever it was, Abridge Swift or whatever. And But we learned that. We learned how important that was. And it was... It was almost as though Aldershot was a dry run for the Wimbledon job because, the, you know, we had the season ticket ripped up after three games in front of us. We, we beat a team called Debenham in the FA Cup and we was verbally abused. We beat them 6-1. We were verbally abused from the first kickoff to the last. Yeah, and, yeah, I remember that. You know, the, the, the supporters tend to forget them. <laughs> they remember the, the good days, thankfully. And um, we took so much lessons from Hayes, sorry, from Aldershot into that period at Wimbledon. And Stu, I mean, they were almost identical clubs, weren't they, Stu? Apart from the vision at the top. Yeah, I mean, good, both good support base. We had two of the biggest clubs in the both divisions with the, with the two teams. We paid... Probably the had the biggest budget in both with both both teams. Not the first year we didn't. The first year um, we had. Do you remember the yeah, bad they tried yeah. to give us? Yeah, but it was. We nearly it was, turned it down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, but it, it, like I say, it was identical. And you know, if we hadn't ever learnt any lessons, we'd have, we wouldn't have been very good at our job, would we? So we did. Yeah. We did learn lessons, and uh, it over the period of time we worked together. We had we had some things go against us, but small margins went for us at Wimbledon. And and, and to be fair, the players take massive credit because we had a we had a good group, didn't we? Well, we had a few good groups, you know. We and again and again we learned that to get out the Ryman you need big and ugly, which we got out at Staines, and then we changed completely to young, hungry players that we could turn into into uh, full time pros. And you know those those lessons were well learned, and you touched on it there. The margins are so slight. Uh, I, I was reading recently that I was viewed as a very lucky manager, and I think, well, I didn't feel that lucky at Stoke. I didn't feel that lucky <laughs> at uh, Carlisle. So you know, maybe you earn your luck sometimes. And. You talk about vision. What, what's the difference in that vision then? You, the, the, the vision that Wimbledon had that, that made the difference to you being the manager there and, and buying into what they were trying to achieve? Well, in, in uh, not small things, in big things, in uh, things like when, I, when we went full-time at Aldershot, I had to cook the boys' food. I like a bit of cooking. It wasn't a problem. But I had to do that. Well, that doesn't make sense, does it? the manager leaving the training early and cooking the food. It don't make sense. So there were no provisions. Our training facilities were less than adequate. Um, and we never really had any sports science or anything like that. Whereas you could go to the Wimbledon board and you could say, look, we need, uh, we need obviously a full-time physio. We need uh, not a part-time physio because you've got to have a full-time physio. We need decent training facilities. And we went out and we, with Simon Bass, because he was a cabbie, he took us to this place where uh, they train today. And it wasn't perfect, but it had about five different pitches on it of which we could utilise, train. We could get a little gym going. We had the sports science going. We had the heart rate monitors. We had everything that on a on a cheap scale we could afford, but we had it all. Whereas at Aldershot, it was very, very, um, I will stick up for the board and say, could anybody who'd envisage we'd go from the Ryman into the playoff final that quickly? Honestly, could, could is it fair to 
to to to look at the fact that we didn't have the finance in place and we didn't have the structure. It's not just finance. It's the whole structure of the club. Um, at Wimbledon, we had a woman who'd come in and done all the cooking. We had a sports scientist who, who would go, and he's, he's played enough. We had proper physios. We didn't have to, if we needed a scan, we'd have a scan. But all the shot, you try and get a scan, wow. Yeah. You know, and that's not just about money. That's about a, a, about a professional plan. Where do you want to be? Because you could say to Eric, well, Eric could say to you, this is where I want to be. And then I could say to Eric, well, this is what I need. Hmm. Whereas it, at all the shot, it was... Well, get us high up. Where would you like to, what would you like to do? What, what's the plan for the next five years? Get as high up as you can. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, can well as you- I can remember the first week we uh, we we got the Wimbledon job. And uh, we, I think we got appointed to the Monday. And we went to see the training facilities, as Terry said, with, with me, Terry, uh, Trevor, Eric, Ivor, Bass. And they used to train at the old training site where they used to train when it was the old Wimbledon. Um, Wimbledon Common. Yeah. Wimbledon Common, yeah. And we went, you know, your first month, six months as a manager, you're your, your strongest, as we all know. So we looked at the training facilities where David used to train with them. And it's not Dave's fault, this. It's it's just, it, it's what he was given. Where yes. This is not adequate. You know, you, you, you change here. There's about a 10-minute walk to the pitch. You know, this is not this is not adequate for what we need. So we scoured the area. We, we went to look at a few sites and uh, we changed it, didn't we? And that was in with yeah. the first couple of weeks. And then as you do, you speak to your physio, you speak to your kit man, you speak to your, your sports scientist guy, you know, anything football related, but more so the physio because it's massively important to keep the boys fit. What do you need, Mike? Mike Rayner, his, his name, he went, no, he says, Everything I need, everything I want, I've got. So that was already in place. The sports scientist was happy. Everything was in place, bar from the training facilities, and we 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 um, readjusted those within the first couple of weeks. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, you go to Manchester City. You're playing Luton Town in the the, 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 the playoff final. And hang on, I'm not letting you forget the playoff semis. Oh right, okay. <laughs> You, you, you we beat on. Fleetwood. We beat Fleetwood. Smash them. <laughs> we beat them. And again, we, we'd had a good build up to that, and we went into that full of confidence. Won two nil at their place, six at ours, and it's the biggest uh, conference semi final playoff win in the history of the conference. How about that one? That's one stat I haven't got. I want the boast, but. Uh, <laughs> well, the, man- the manager yeah, of Fleetwood, okay. Graham. Was um, I still speak to him to this day? And he's a friend of mine. His manager Dundee, uh, Mickey Mellon. He's gone on okay. to do. Yeah, yeah. Who's Bree's manager in Dundee at the moment? I yeah. spoke a couple of weeks ago about a couple of younger players, and uh, he even mentions it now to me. He says like that team you you at Brownie and yourself had at Wimbledon was a cracking team. He says, and obviously that was I think that was his first job. I think at uh, at Fleetwood, and uh, he still talks about it now. Really? That's good. Give yeah. me his number. I'll ring him up and remind him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did it feel like? Anyway, a question, Graham. Do you want yeah. to a question? We're going to Main Road and we prepared properly. We went up the day before. We trained at Man City Stadium and boy, it was a good job we did because we... we got everybody on our side. Yeah, we got we got all the the staff in our cell. We were meant to have the away changing room, and the groundsman, the groundsman, because we turned up and trained on it, and they said they weren't going to bother. Uh, and also, the groundsman was a city supporter, and he remembers David Pleat celebrating when City went down. He gave us the home dressing room, <laughs> which made a difference, and the pitch. I don't know what it's like today, but in this, it was totally to even the best pitches we played on because it was like part nylon, part part grass, but 
really, really firm. So almost a stud wouldn't go in it. And if you hadn't done that training before, you weren't properly prepared. We practiced penalties for for weeks before. before and yeah. those small margins got you through. And it, Danny Kedwell was your man, wasn't he? He scored the, the all-important penalty. Yeah. yeah. Um, Stu talking through the nervous penalties. Well, we had we had a young go- goalie in, in goal, Seb Brown, who was uh, who was a great go- keeper for us. He, uh, he 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 deserves as much credit as Danny does. Danny always wanted the last penalty. Danny was a great character. He was uh, <clears throat> he he always wanted to be the main man because he was a centre forward and he's a goal scorer. And uh, but you know, in front of what was the crowd? It was obviously a big crowd. They took the last penalty to win it. Fantastic feeling. Then. And Brown, he went on his sprint. I couldn't catch him. I tried to dive on his back, but off he went. And um, he tried to emulate uh, Danny's penalty in the in the same goal towards the end. But oh, what! I don't think you can describe the feeling, Brown. You know, winning, well, especially, especially after we'd suffered those cruel defeats for the yeah, shots. That's what and you was. think yeah. we're destined never to go in there? And, and everybody has aspirations to. To either play, you played in the football league. I wasn't good enough to play in the football league, but got aspirations to manage in there, and, mm. and we achieved that. It, it was fantastic, yeah. And then you got your you, you got your aspiration because you, you you had that first season in the football league, and uh, what, what 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 was that like being in the football league after, for the club's point of view, their dream to to get back into the name of Wimbledon. To the football league, but but also for yourself who hadn't managed there before. Yeah, we we started off very. We lost the first game. Uh, took us about three games to win one at Dagenham. Then we went on a, a great run. Uh, I don't know if Stu remembers the Morecambe game. Yeah, it took us up to about third position. And I remember thinking, I'll move your eyes again, Terry. Can't see your eyes. There you go. So bit, I remember thinking, this is all right. This is like normal. This is like normal. We're going to do all right again. And then we had a, a terrible spell. And we um, eventually turned that round, stayed up by about 10 points in the first year. Uh, I don't know if Stu agrees with me. We've never talked too much about it. Um, we got sacked after seven games in the second year. And I think we totally got our recruitment wrong and whereas uh, I boasted about how good our recruitment was at every level up to that we had no scouting system in place whatsoever and to go into the football league without adequate scouting I remember talking to John Steele and he had at least six or seven scouts working um, every week out there looking at talent and look at the boys he's unearthed and we had, I think we had, I don't know, oh, who do we have? Who do we have, Stu? Well, One. We, we, like, like Brownie just said, we've got the different aspects of manager, management team, and, and, and recruitment is probably one of the most, it keeps you in a job, it keeps, it keeps you up yeah. there. And we got that wrong. We, we, signed, uh, we, we signed a left back from Bournemouth. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, what's his name? I won't. Don't name. It's our fault. We signed the wrong yeah. ones. Uh, listen, it was great. I still speak to him now. He works for Bristol City as one of their scouts. I see him at many a games. And uh, you know when you sign players, and it's it's the wrong time, wrong position, wrong sort of. His legs are gone. Wrong about it, and it and it and it was we we got the recruitment wrong. Not only with yeah. that aspect, but with, with a few players, and that's what cost us. Yeah, yeah, I didn't agree the way they did it. I, I've still got gripes about it now. But hey, listen, we all get sacked and we all lose jobs and we all end up leaving out. And, it, and but, again, Stu, unless you're continually winning, five years lifespan is over and above anybody gets nowadays, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, like, you, like you said earlier, Tal, with with all the shot. You know the progression they made. Everybody plateaus. Everybody, whether you're a, you're an Aldershot, a Wimbledon. I mean, you look at the top top of the British game now. 
with Liverpool, what they what they've achieved, European champions, league champions, they they have to keep emulate, they have to keep winning things. For, yeah, yeah. Uh, not, I wouldn't say for Klopp to keep his keep his job, but to keep that interest in that level with it's it's constant pressure, and it comes to a stage where he's not going to be able to do that. And that's like at any level of football, everybody plateaus out, and that's what happened to us, to us at, uh, at Aldershot and definitely at Wimbledon. You can't yeah. keep achieving things and winning things and keep everybody happy because um, playing a certain brand of football and a good foot, if you don't win things, you're going to lose your yeah. job. And that's what happens. Yeah. I've got to talk about one game, and that's when you, you, you both came back to Aldershot with Wimbledon, and it was uh, early on in the season. And Simon Bassey would have been part of your team as well. And I can always remember there was a big build up to the game. You were coming back, you know, first time you'd been back at management team and that. And as you came out of the tunnel, the whole ground applauded, applauded you all. And you're doing all of this clap, clap and everything. And I can always remember the manager, Dean Holdsworth at the time. And he just said, he said, this is, this was afterwards. He goes, "It was like being at your ex-wife's wedding." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice of Dean. Very nice of Dean. I, I can remember it, it was at the game that was one all when you scored in the ninety-fifth minute. Absolutely, I was going to raise that, so you've done that for me. So that's good news. <laughs> yeah, that was Stu's fault. I was trying to make a tactical change. You wouldn't make it. <laughs> we should have bought two centre halves on just to defend. But now, actually, we'd been playing really well up to that point, and all, I thought all shot would have better side in the day. So it wasn't the homecoming we expected. No, <laughs> yeah, sports was great that night. And yeah. neither of us have ever been back since, have we? I, I don't think so. No, not, no, not, not, not management and that. No, so, no, no, you wouldn't have been so. Wimbledon, just to finish on the Wimbledon, you know, it's quite poignant at the moment. They've moved into their new stadium. You talk about a club having a vision. They always had a vision of getting to Plough Lane by whichever way they did it. They did that. And the fact that the pair of you played such a big part in that, you must have been very proud to see that and, and knowing what you did to contribute to, to that journey. Yeah, it, I think it's... Um, I, I, I think it's definitely a ground both Stu and I should go back to and, or should should visit and and feel like we're part of that because uh, I know the fans I speak to at Wimbledon uh, and I've got some friends who are a season ticket holders there and um, they value every manager that they've had through the AFC uh, progression because you know to get to get from the combined counties to the Football League in nine years is phenomenal. And uh, uh, I've, I've seen the new stadium. I haven't actually been in there. I've stood outside it. And uh, I'm looking forward to going there, hopefully within the next uh, couple of months. It's a bit more difficult for Stu because he watches Matty at every game. And now they're allowing crowds back. You'll probably do that, Stu, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, I, I will do, most definitely. Who's led the line, captain of the club? Can he put Wimbledon into the Football League? And one walks snug. Yes. 48 games, two hours of football today, and Wimbledon are down to one penalty kick to take them into the football. 